Welcome to the owner's class video for the Singer Stylist Model 7258 sewing machine. In this video, we're going to go over what you need to know to get started, such as winding the bobbin, threading the needle, selecting a stitch, changing the needle, and more. Let's start by taking a tour of the machine. The first thing we're going to do is plug in our power cord and plug in the foot control and turn the machine on. And you'll know the machine is on when the screen and light come on. Here's the hand wheel that you will always turn towards you, the bobbin winding stopper, the bobbin winding spindle, the carry handle, the spool pin where we'll put our spool of thread, the bobbin winding tension disc, a metal threading guide, another metal guide, our tension dial, which allows us to fine tune the look of our stitches, and the take-up lever. This is very important when we thread our machine, so we'll go over more about this later. The reverse lever, which allows you to sew in reverse, and also acts as a tie-off for decorative stitches. The speed control, which allows you to set the maximum speed of your machine, to the right is faster, to the left is slower. The programmable needle up-down button, which allows you to choose whether or not to have the needle stop in the up or down position when you stop sewing. The start-stop button, which allows you to sew without the foot control on the machine. Down here we have the built-in needle threader, your needle, the all-purpose foot, the presser foot lifter, which allows you to raise and lower your presser foot, and a bobbin comes already in the machine. On our panel, we have our stitch selector buttons, and to the right we have this circle of buttons. The up and down arrow allow you to increase or decrease your stitch length, and the right and left allow you to increase or decrease your stitch width. On the front of the machine, we have the removable storage compartment, which when removed exposes the free arm, which is very useful when sewing cuffs and pant hems. If we open up the storage compartment, we have additional accessories inside, such as additional bobbins and presser feet. Let's take a look at some of those presser feet. In addition to the all-purpose foot that already comes on your machine, you get a satin stitch foot used for sewing satin stitches and decorative stitches, a zipper foot used for inserting zippers, and it can also be used for inserting piping, a gathering foot which can be used to gather a layer of fabric and can also be used to gather a layer of fabric while sewing it to a flat piece of fabric, a blind hem foot used to sew blind hems, an overcasting foot which can create seams and seam finishing using your overcasting stitches, a straight stitch foot, which is particularly useful when sewing shears and lightweight fabrics, a rolled hem foot, which is used for creating a rolled hem, a darning and embroidery foot, which is used for freehand sewing and freehand embroidery, and a buttonhole foot, used for sewing buttonholes. Now it's time to wind a bobbin. Raise the presser foot and move this little black button to the right to pop off your clear view cover and retrieve your bobbin. This machine uses class 15J bobbins. So when you go to the store to purchase more bobbins, make sure you purchase Singer class 15J bobbins. Place your spool of thread on the spool pin and cap it with the spool cap. Bring the thread to this metal guide and clip it in. And then come to the second metal guide and bring it around. Then you'll want to wrap it around the bobbin winding tension disc 
and come over to the bobbin winding spindle. The bobbin has no designated top or bottom, so insert the thread from the inside out through the top of the bobbin, hold the thread tail, and press the bobbin onto the bobbin winding spindle, and you'll feel it and hear it click into place. Make sure it's all the way on the bobbin winding spindle so that thread doesn't accidentally wind around the spindle itself. Move the spindle over to the right and press the foot control to begin winding. Once the thread tail is buried, clip the tail flush with the top of the bobbin then continue winding until the bobbin is full or until you have enough thread for your project. When you're done winding, move the bobbin winding spindle back to the left, remove the bobbin, and trim the thread. Now we're ready to put it in the machine. Before you put your bobbin into the bobbin holder, make sure the thread is coming off the bobbin in a counterclockwise motion. Or if there's a thread tail hanging down, it will look like the letter P. P for perfect sewing. Place the bobbin into the bobbin holder. Lightly hold the top of the bobbin and bring the thread behind this metal notch and let it hang to the side. If you've just wound a bobbin, the top of your machine probably looks like this. Let's take the thread off of the bobbin winding tension disc, and it's already in metal guides one and two. So we'll come down number two's path, do a U-turn at number three, and back up to the take-up lever. So we're going to go from right to left and back down. Come down and place the thread behind the guide right above the needle. Bring the thread under the hook on the built-in needle threader. Bring down the built-in needle threader and move it so that the prongs encompass the needle. Bring the thread under the prongs, lightly hold the thread to give it some tension, and slowly release the built-in needle threader. Now there will be a loop behind the needle. Just pull that loop and the needle is threaded. Now we need to draw up the bobbin thread. Hold the upper thread tail in your hand and turn the hand wheel towards you one complete rotation until the needle is in the highest position. Then pull up on your thread and there will be a loop of bobbin thread. Pull that up and place it underneath the presser foot. Put the clear view cover back on over the bobbin holder. And we're ready to test a stitch. The straight stitch is automatically selected when we turn on our machine. So my straight stitch is already selected. Place the fabric under the presser foot. Lower the presser foot and begin sewing. When you're done sewing, raise the presser foot and trim the threads. And there's our stitch. It looks good on the top and on the back. If your stitches look something like this on the top and loopy, irregular, or full of thread on the back, then you'll need to re-thread your upper thread. You can also check your instruction manual. When sewing a seam, you'll notice on your needle plate that there are lines with markings such as 3 8 and 5 8 Many commercial patterns I use have a 5 8 inch seam allowance. So I'm going to place my fabric under the presser foot in line with the 5 8 mark. Lower the presser foot and sew forwards a few stitches. 
Now I'm going to press and hold the reverse button to sew backwards a few stitches. Release the button and sew forward along your seam. Notice I'm not pushing or pulling the fabric. I am simply guiding it along the guideline. Stop sewing once you've reached the end of your fabric. Press and hold the reverse button to sew backwards a few stitches. Release the reverse button and sew to the end. Raise the presser foot and trim the threads. And here's our seam. We did reverse sewing at the beginning and end so that our stitches won't become unraveled. Now let's check out how to select a stitch. When sewing decorative stitches, we're going to put the satin stitch foot on the machine. And we retrieved this foot from the removable storage compartment. To remove the all-purpose foot from your machine, behind the presser foot holder is a little lever. Push the lever towards you and the presser foot pops right off. Place the satin stitch foot so the little metal bar is under the presser foot holder and lower the presser foot holder and it will snap into place. Now we're going to select our decorative stitch. Let's start by sewing out stitch number 61, which is a pretty vine pattern. Go up to your stitch selector button and press it until you see 61. The optimum length and width for the stitch are already set. Place your fabric under the presser foot, lower the presser foot, and begin sewing. Stop sewing once you've reached the end, raise the presser foot, and trim the thread. And there's our vine stitch. Next, I want to sew stitch number 32, the star stitch. So I'm going to come back up to my stitch selector buttons and press them until I see the number 32. I'm going to place my fabric back under the presser foot, lower the presser foot, and begin sewing. Stop sewing once you've reached the end, raise the presser foot, and trim the thread. And there's our star stitch. Last, let's do stitch number 12, the feather stitch. I'm going to go back up to my stitch selector buttons and press them until I see the number 12. Place the fabric under the presser foot, lower the presser foot, and begin sewing.
Stop sewing once you've reached the end, raise the presser foot, and trim the thread. And there's our feather stitch. Now let's take a look at our stitch length and stitch width selectors. Now let's look at adjusting length and width on our stitches. All of the stitches on the machine will be set to their optimum settings once you select them, but many of them can be overridden to customize them for your project. Let's stitch out number 63, the serpentine stitch. I'm going to go to my stitch selector buttons and press them until 63 is shown. Let's stitch that out at the default settings. Place the fabric under the presser foot, lower the presser foot, and begin sewing. Stop sewing when you reach the end, raise the presser foot, and trim the thread. And there's our serpentine stitch. Now let's see if I adjust the stitch length and make it longer. For my stitch length, I see there's a line under 1.8, which means it's on the default setting. I'm going to press the up arrow to 2.5. Let's see how that looks. Place the fabric underneath the presser foot, lower the presser foot, and begin sewing. Stop sewing at the end of the fabric, raise your presser foot, and trim the thread. And there's our serpentine stitch where we increased stitch length. Now let's, select a now let's select a shorter stitch length. Go back to the button where we adjusted our stitch length and press the down arrow. When we've reached the default, you will see the line go under the number, but we want to go lower than that. To 0 0.8. Place the fabric under the presser foot, lower the presser foot, and begin sewing. Stop sewing at the end of your fabric, raise the presser foot, and trim the threads. And there's our serpentine stitch where we decreased the stitch length. Now let's look at adjusting stitch width. I'm going to move my stitch length back to the default setting, and we see it's the default because it has the line under it. I'm going to decrease my stitch width by pressing the left arrow. Put your fabric underneath the presser foot, lower the presser foot, and begin sewing. Stop sewing at the end of your fabric, raise the presser foot, and trim the thread. So here's our default serpentine stitch. Here's where we increased stitch length. Here's where we decreased stitch length. And here's where we had the default stitch length, but decreased stitch width. You can adjust your stitch length and stitch width settings to customize your projects. So play around and see what works for you. Now let's select a buttonhole. On the machine, I can see that we have bar tack buttonholes, which are the most common type of buttonhole, keyhole buttonholes, typically used in outerwear, and rounded buttonholes. 
but since the bar tack is the most common, I'm going to select number 94. So I'm going to go up to my stitch selector buttons and press them until I see 94. When preparing your fabric to make a buttonhole, it's a good idea to stabilize the fabric. This will prevent any sort of bunching or puckering whenever you sew your buttonhole. Place the button onto your project and mark the bottom where the buttonhole will begin. Then use a ruler and mark a guideline upwards. I retrieved the buttonhole foot from the removable storage compartment. Open up the top and place your button inside. And push it so the button is snug. Now we need to remove the all-purpose foot. Push the lever behind the presser foot holder and the presser foot will pop off. Place the buttonhole foot under the presser foot holder so the metal prongs are underneath. Lower the presser foot and the buttonhole foot will snap into place. Then lower the buttonhole lever so it's behind this plastic notch. Take your fabric and line up the bottom mark we made with the red mark on the presser foot and slide the fabric under. Line up the long guideline we drew with the center of the foot. Lower the presser foot and begin sewing. When the machine stops sewing, raise the presser foot and there's our buttonhole. To finish off our buttonhole, take the tail thread and thread a hand sewing needle and move the thread to the back of your project and tie it off. To open the buttonhole, place a pin at the top bar tack and this will help to make sure we don't accidentally cut through that top bar tack. Take the seam ripper that came in the removable accessory tray, insert it above the bottom bar tack, and carefully work your way up. Remove the pin, and there is our buttonhole, perfectly sized for our button. Now let's change a needle. Now it's time to change the needle. I'm going to place a piece of paper over the feed teeth just so I don't accidentally drop the needle into my machine. Take the screwdriver from your removable storage compartment, grab the needle, and loosen the needle clamp screw. And remove the needle. Take a new needle with the flat side toward the back and insert it into the needle clamp until it's as high as it will go and tighten the screw. Remove the paper and we've changed a needle. To learn more about your machine, check out your instruction manual or the Singer site.